I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another one of our Teachers of the Year profiles. We're here with uh, Joellen Shanks, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Elk Grove Unified School right. District. Well, congratulations first, and, Thank and thanks you. for being here. Thank you very much. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you teach, and, and tell us what you teach. I teach at Stone Lake Elementary in the Elk Grove Unified District, and I teach second grade. And I've been teaching at that school since it opened, and this will be, I believe, our 10th year and I've taught mostly second grade for my career, 22 years, probably I'd say three quarters of it in second grade. Mm -hmm. And so you know that I love second grade. <laughs> what other grade levels have you taught? I've taught first grade and third grade. Okay, so your primary, primary yes, education. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, in that amount of time, 22 years, uh, it's really not that long because it probably went by pretty fast. It did, very fast. What kind of changes have you seen in education over that time? Mm -hmm many changes. It's, it's kind of like a pendulum. One time they're telling us, you know, we, we need to do this type of reading program and then it swings and we're now doing a different kind of reading program. So it kind of fluctuates depending on what's being adopted and um, what, um, I guess, the research is that's the best practices for teaching. Um, I've seen a big change um, in the the students that we're getting. Um, not as many with, um, I would say, more with a language difficulties. Mm -hmm. I've seen an increase in that over the years. Uh, and I would say those are the biggest things that I've noticed. Um, and dealing with, dealing with the, the language, language barriers, um, how does that create additional obstacles? Well, one good teaching practice that all teachers should use, do is use realia, which is just using objects to teach with so that kids have a visual aid. And especially that's one of the biggest things that you need to do if you have um, English language learners is to use a lot of realia. So although it should be an obstacle, it, shouldn't, it also shouldn't be one because you should be doing that anyway. A good teacher would always bring in things for the children to see. So. Um, other than that, I would say if a child is really a non-English speaker, the challenges of just having them understand what you want them to do. Um, but you can often use other students to help them. And um, so it is a challenge, but there's ways of helping them and doing it in the best interest of all the kids. And, and new challenges keep cropping up. Right. I think the biggest thing that's happening to us is that we keep getting loaded on with more things that we are responsible for. And the day isn't any longer, which I'm not advocating for a longer day, but um, it just really makes it hard to feel like you're doing the best job you could when you have to cover so many different things. And I think, of course, it happens in the elementary level more than the high school level, but um, we, just, we all feel like we just have too much on our plate. And we'd, we'd love to just have more time to kind of go deeper into some areas without feeling like we're giving up something else. And, you, and you're so. constantly having to weave in curriculum into everything you do. Yes, so it, you it, do. You it do. makes it a challenge. It is, yeah. So w for you as a teacher, what do you find are some of the best ways to motivate your students? Or at that age, are they easier to motivate? Um, second graders still love their teacher. So and when, their parents. And the parents yeah. love the teacher yeah. too. So well, providing you're doing a good job with yeah. your child. but. Um, I think it's easy to motivate them. Um, I try not to use um, a lot of extrinsic awards. I like to um, reward them with positive reinforcement um, as the main thing, but they just want to do well. They want to do well for their teachers. So in my case, I don't have to work as hard as, you know, as hard on that, but um, I think that, and that's why I pick second grade, because I think that they still enjoy um, coming to school and learning and they're excited about everything. And the biggest thing that ex excites them, I think, is uh, especially science, because they just, doesn't matter what you're teaching them, but um, they, let's say for example, I teach fossils. They are outside on the playground <laughs> trying to dig up rocks and claiming that they're fossils. So every day I get a nice little collection handed to me. Um, and so it's just that excitement that they have that also keeps me excited about what I do. But you must have a couple of kids here and there are a little bit more challenging to motivate. So what, 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 do, do, what do you them? do to reach back to, to, to motivate them? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing is to um, keep communication with them. 
also not to always bring it to the attention of the rest of the class, but to work with them individually to find out what's actually causing the disruption that they may be having in the classroom or why they're inattentive or um, something like that. Work very closely with the parents, try and work on um, a solution together. Um, I think that's the easiest way to do it and I think that they, when you bring it out to the attention of all the other kids, it just makes it worse. So it's, it's difficult because we, we are, you know, small classrooms and everyone around you knows what's going on, but for those kids that give you a little extra challenge, you just have to work a little bit harder and spend a little more time with them and work very closely with their families. Speaking of families, you know, family involvement is really important to a child's education, uh, no matter at what grade level. Right, extremely important. What, what are some of the things that you do to encourage parental involvement? Well, um, in, at my school, volunteers are always welcome. I happen to get quite a few volunteers during the year, and I think they volunteer because they want to help, but they also want to see what their child's doing. So that's one nice thing about that. Um, I keep open communication with my parents through emails and reminders and newsletters. And um, uh, of course, back to school night keeps the parents informed. And um, there's a lot of activities that go on at the school too that provide an, um, an area for the parents to come in and help. Um, I also try to, of course, invite them on field trips. and um, But keeping that communication open is probably the biggest thing. And especially, there's a good example, I'll tell you a little story that um, I had a child in my room that every time we had an event, he and, and the parents were supposed to bring him to it, they didn't bring him. And I thought, well, I know they both work. I know the mom's very busy. We've sent home lots and lots of notes. I don't know how she wouldn't know that this was happening, going on. But um, towards the end, I thought, well, maybe I better um, just phone her just to find out. And I said, we're having a, a program tonight. And I was really hoping that your son could make it there. She goes, you're having a show tonight? <laughs> I didn't want to start <laughs> laughing, but I said, yes, we are. And I was really hoping that you would be able to bring him. She goes, oh, certainly we can bring him. And I said, you know, I was asking her, she wasn't aware of it. Well, she did, she did work a lot, and her oldest child, was a, a, probably in her 20s, was kind of in charge of letting her know what was coming up in school. And so she just hadn't paid enough attention to that. But I just, I guess I should have been doing that all along, calling her right away to make sure, but I didn't realize that that was what was happening. Well, sometimes things get stuck in the bottom of the backpack, too, so. They do, they do. So, yeah, you got to keep on top of that. You do. Yeah. So, what, what inspired you to become a teacher? What brought you to the profession? Well, um, I was not a person who, when I started college, knew that I was going to be a teacher. I, in fact, knew I needed to go to college. That was my number one goal. But I was a person who liked a lot of different things. I did enjoy working with children. I spent time working in the Sacramento State University Children's Center that they had there. But what I decided to do when I knew I had to make a decision was just to talk to all kinds of people and find out what they did for a living and find out if it was something that would connect with me. And I worked in a store that sold wedding invitations, so I had an opportunity to sit with customers and talk to them a little bit more. And these two teachers came in, and I started asking, well, how do you like your job? What about your job do you like? And they, their eyes lit up. They were just so animated and excited about what they do. And I don't know what it was. It was just that moment that made a connection for me. And I knew that that's what I was going to be doing. I just, um, it, after thinking and thinking and researching, it just finally came to be that that's what I need to you know. I've never looked back. I, it's, it has been the job for me and I've loved it. What so. would you say to those people who are considering teaching? Um, I would tell them that it's the one career that gives you probably the most rewards. Um, and I'm not going to say that it's not hard work because it is hard work, but that you can not only get the reward of seeing your students progress from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, but you get those rewards, little rewards that come during the day when a child finally understands what you were trying to teach them and you can just see the light bulb turn on. Um, and it's just, you feel like you make a difference. And I think that if that's something that they, and they love children, then that would be the job for them because they really can make a difference. Okay, well congratulations to you, you. very much. We've been speaking with Joan Shanks, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Elk Grove Unified School District. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us, and congratulations. Thank you very much.